Welcome to the Clinical Refresher for Radiography of the Knee. This module was written by Susie Mosley, BS, RTR, and Megan Lemp, BA, BA. After completing this module, you will be able to describe the patient preparation requirements for radiography of the knee, explain how to position a patient for a knee examination, Summarize the technical settings and patient instructions necessary to produce a diagnostic image. Identify major structures seen on knee radiographs. List the evaluation criteria used to determine image quality. Examinations of the knee generally include AP, lateral, and AP oblique projections. Additional projections may be performed to demonstrate specific structures and the functional status of the knee. Other commonly performed projections included AP weight-bearing view and axial projections of the intercondylar fossa. Clear communication with the patient will ensure that a proper patient history is acquired and that the patient will comply with all instructions. It is generally good practice to explain the procedure to a patient before exam positioning so that any questions can be answered immediately. Patient history includes a discussion of any known anatomical variants that may impact the exam as well as any medical devices implanted in the area of interest. For example, technical factors will need to be adjusted if a patient has a joint replacement or severe arthritis. Patients must remove all clothing in the area of interest. If needed, patients are provided with a gown to provide privacy and to prevent the patient from getting cold. Positioning for an AP projection of the knee begins with the patient supine and the affected leg extended. A curved image receptor is used if the patient is unable to fully extend the leg. Make sure the patient's pelvis is not rotated. The image receptor is centered to the affected knee joint, which is located approximately half inch or 1.3 centimeters below the apex of the patella. The patellar apex can be located easily when the patient's knee is slightly flexed. To place the knee in a true AP position, adjust the rotation of the patient's leg until the femoral condyles are parallel with the plane of the image receptor. In this position, the patella usually lies slightly toward the medial side. The proper central ray angle is dependent on the thickness of the patient's pelvis as measured from the distance between the ASIS and the radiographic table. For patients with a thinner pelvis, less than 19 centimeters, the central ray is angled 3 to 5 degrees caudad. For patients with a thicker pelvis, greater than 24 centimeters, the central ray is angled 3 to 5 degrees cephalat. No angle is used when the pelvis measures between 19 and 24 centimeters. For all patients, the central ray is directed to the knee joint and enters at a point half inch inferior to the apex of the patella. Anatomical markers are placed on the image receptor to identify the anatomical side that is being examined. The patient's gonads are shielded and the shield is placed between the x-ray source and the patient. Instruct the patient to hold very still, but no breathing instructions are necessary. A 10 by 12 inch or 24 by 30 centimeter image receptor is used for an AP projection of the knee and is adjusted lengthwise. The SID is set at a minimum of 40 inches, although some departments may require a longer SID. Collimation is adjusted to 10 inches by 12 inches. Knee examinations can be performed with or without a grid, depending on the thickness of the knee departmental protocol, and the physician's preference. 85 kVp is a common setting for AP projections performed with the grid. Automatic exposure control may be used to achieve proper mass setting. However, common mass settings are 2.5 mass when using digital radiography and 5 mass when using computed radiography. When a grid is not used, kVp is commonly set to 70 and the mass settings remain the same. A small focal spot is selected. The AP projection shows a frontal view of the entire knee, including the distal femur, the patella, and the femoral condyles. The femoral tibial joint space, the tibial plateaus, and the intercondylar eminence are visualized. The proximal tibia and fibular head also are seen. The following quality criteria should be used to determine if an AP knee radiograph has been produced with proper positioning and technical factors. Collimation does not obscure relevant anatomy. 
When possible, the patient's knee is fully extended. If the patient's anatomy is normal, the femoral-tibial joint space is open and the width of the inner spaces is equal on both sides. The knee is not rotated as indicated by symmetric femoral condyles and the patella entirely superimposed on the femur. Also, the intercondylar eminence is centered and there is slight superimposition of the tibia and fibular head when there is no rotation. The image also includes all soft tissue and adequately demonstrates bony detail. Positioning for the lateral projection begins with the patient lying on the affected side. Depending on the patient's mobility, either draw the unaffected leg in front of the affected leg and rest it on a support device, or draw the affected leg forward with the unaffected leg extended behind it. Use a sandbag or positioning sponge to support the ankle of the affected leg and make sure the patient's pelvis is not rotated. For most examinations, the affected knee is flexed 20 to 30 degrees. This helps to relax the leg muscles and demonstrate the greatest amount of joint space. However, the knee must not be flexed more than 10 degrees if the patient has a patellar fracture because there is risk of fragment separation. Adjust the position of the knee until the femoral condyles are superimposed and the condyles and patella are perpendicular to the plane of the image receptor. The central ray is angled 5 to 7 degrees cephalad and is directed to the knee joint at a point 1 inch or 2.5 centimeters distal to the medial epicondyle. The small cephalad angle is used to prevent the magnified image of the medial femoral condyle from obscuring the joint space. Also, the medial condyle lies slightly inferior to the lateral condyle when the patient is in a lateral recumbent position. Make sure the image receptor is centered to the central ray. Anatomical markers are placed on the image receptor to identify the anatomical side that is being examined. The patient's gonads are shielded and the shield is placed between the x-ray source and the patient. Instruct the patient to hold very still, but no breathing instructions are necessary. A 10 by 12 inch or 24 by 30 centimeter image receptor is used for a lateral projection of the knee and is adjusted lengthwise. The SID is set at a minimum of 40 inches, although some departments may require a longer SID. Collimation is adjusted to 10 inches by 12 inches. 85 kvp is a common setting for a lateral projection performed with a grid. Automatic exposure control may be used to achieve proper mass setting. However, common mass settings are 2.5 mass when using digital radiography and 5 mass when using computed radiography. When a grid is not used, kvp is commonly set to 70 and the mass settings remain the same. A small focal spot is selected. The lateral projection will provide a lateral view of the distal femur, patella, femoral tibial joint, and the proximal tibia and fibula. Adjacent soft tissue structures also are visualized. The following quality criteria should be used to determine if a lateral knee radiograph has been produced with proper positioning and technical factors. Collimation does not obscure relevant anatomy. When possible, the knee is flexed 20 to 30 degrees. The knee is in a true lateral position as indicated by superimposition of the femoral condyles. If the anterior aspect of the magnified medial condyle is seen closer to the patella, the patient's knee is over-rotated. If it is farther from the patella, the knee is under-rotated. Similarly, if the inferior aspect of the medial condyle is seen caudal to the lateral condyle, the central ray was not angled enough. If the inferior aspect of the lateral condyle is seen caudal to the medial condyle, the central ray was angled too much. The patella is seen in lateral profile, and the joint space between the patella and femur is open. There is slight superimposition of the tibia and the fibular head. There will be less superimposition if the knee is over-rotated, and there is greater superimposition when the knee is under-rotated. The joint space between the femoral condyles and the tibia is open. The image also includes all soft tissue and adequately demonstrates bony detail. Positioning for a lateral or medial AP oblique projection begins with the patient supine with the leg extended and positioned as for a standard AP projection. The image receptor is centered to the knee joint 
approximately half inch or 1.3 centimeters below the patellar apex. To position the knee for the lateral oblique projection, rotate the patient's leg 45 degrees externally. If needed, use a positioning sponge to elevate the hip and leg of the unaffected side and help the patient maintain the correct position. To position the knee for the medial oblique projection, rotate the patient's leg 45 degrees internally. If needed, use a positioning sponge to elevate the hip of the affected side and help the patient maintain the correct position if needed. For both oblique projections, the central ray is directed to the knee joint and enters at a point half inch inferior to the apex of the patella. As for the AP projection, the proper central ray angle is dependent on the thickness of the patient's pelvis. When the pelvis measures less than 19 centimeters, the central ray is angled 3 to 5 degrees caudat. When the pelvis measures greater than 24 centimeters, the central ray is angled 3 to 5 degrees cephalad. No angle is used when the pelvis measures between 19 and 24 centimeters. Anatomical markers are placed on the image receptor to identify the anatomical side that is being examined. The patient's gonads are shielded, and the shield is placed between the x-ray source and the patient. Instruct the patient to hold very still, but no breathing instructions are necessary. A 10 by 12 inch or 24 by 30 centimeter image receptor is used for an AP oblique projection of the knee and is adjusted lengthwise. The SID is set at a minimum of 40 inches, although some departments may require a longer SID. Collimation is adjusted to 10 inches by 12 inches. 85 kVp is a common setting for a lateral projection performed with a grid. Automatic exposure control may be used to achieve proper mass setting. However, common mass settings are 2.5 mass when using digital radiography and 5 mass when using computed radiography. When a grid is not used, kVp is commonly set to 70 and the mass settings remain the same. A small focal spot is selected with all settings. AP oblique projections will show the patella, femoral condyles, tibial condyles, and the fibular head rotated either laterally or medially. The medial oblique projection also shows the proximal tibial fibular joint. The following quality criteria should be used to determine if an AP oblique knee radiograph has been produced with proper positioning and technical factors. For both oblique radiographs, collimation does not obscure relevant anatomy. The knee joint is open and the tibial plateaus are well visualized. The image also includes all soft tissue and adequately demonstrates bony detail. For the lateral oblique projection, the knee is externally rotated 45 degrees as indicated by the margin of the patella extending slightly past the lateral femoral condyle and the fibula superimposed on the lateral side of the tibia. The medial condyles of the femur and tibia are well demonstrated. For the medial oblique projection, the knee is internally rotated 45 degrees as indicated by the margin of the patella extending slightly past the medial femoral condyle. There is no superimposition of the proximal tibia and fibula and the tibiofibular joint space is open. The lateral femoral and tibial condyles and the posterior aspect of the tibia are well demonstrated. Weight bearing projections may be performed to evaluate the knees for narrowing of the joint space. This examination is often recommended for patients who have a history of arthritis. Generally, both knees are included on one image for comparison. Positioning for an AP projection with weight bearing begins with the patient standing upright on a stool or riser with the backs of their legs against the vertical wall unit. Adjust the patient's stance to center the knees to the grid device. Make sure the patient stands straight with their toes pointing forward, their knees fully extended, and their weight evenly distributed between the feet. Have the patient hold on to a support device for stability if needed. The image receptor is centered to the level of the knee joints approximately half inch or 1.3 centimeters below the patellar apices. The central ray is directly perpendicular to the center of the image receptor and enters at the level of the knee joints. The patient's gonads are shielded and the shield is placed between the x-ray source and the patient. Anatomical markers are placed on both sides of the image receptor to identify the anatomical sides being examined. 
Additionally, an upright or weight-bearing marker is used to indicate the weight-bearing method. The patient is instructed to hold very still, but no breathing instructions are necessary. A 14 by 17 inch or 35 by 43 centimeter image receptor is used for an AP weight-bearing projection of the knees and is adjusted crosswise. The SID is set at a minimum of 40 inches, although some departments may require a longer SID. Collimation is adjusted to 14 inches by 17 inches. 85 kVp is a common setting for an AP weight-bearing projection performed with a grid. Automatic exposure control may be used to achieve the proper mass setting. However, common mass settings are 2.5 mass when using digital radiography and 5 mass when using computed radiography. A small focal spot is selected. An AP weight-bearing projection of the knees shows the femoral tibial joint spaces. This projection is also used to demonstrate varus and valgus deformities. The following quality criteria should be used to determine if a weight-bearing AP knee radiograph has been produced with proper positioning and technical factors. Collimation does not obscure relevant anatomy. Both knees are included on the image and the knee joint spaces are centered. There is no rotation of either knee. Several methods can be used to perform an axial or tunnel projection of the intercondylar fossa with varying patient positions and central ray angulations. These include the Holmblad, Camp Coventry, and Beclair methods. The method used generally depends on departmental protocol, physician preference, and the patient's condition. A PA axial projection using the Holmblad method can be performed with the patient standing or with the patient kneeling on the radiographic table. However the patient is positioned, make sure they hold on to an appropriate support device for stability. For a standing examination, place the image receptor on a stool next to a support device. Have the patient flex the affected knee and rest it on the stool with the tibial aspect of the knee in contact with the image receptor. Alternatively, have the patient stand upright facing a vertical image receptor with the affected leg forward. Then, flex the affected knee and place the tibial aspect of the knee in contact with the image receptor. Adjust the patient's stance so the unaffected leg does not obscure the path of the x-ray beam. For a kneeling examination, the patient is positioned on their hands and knees. Place the image receptor underneath the tibial aspect of the affected knee. For all positions, the image receptor is centered to the patellar apex. Adjust the patient's position until the knee is flexed 70 degrees from full extension. This places the femur at an angle of 70 degrees from the plane of the image receptor and 20 degrees from the central ray. The central ray is directed perpendicularly to the image receptor and the long axis of the tibia. It enters at the level of the superior popliteal fossa and exits through the apex of the patella. Positioning for a PA axial projection using the Camp Coventry method begins with the patient prone and the image receptor positioned underneath the affected knee. Using a protractor for guidance, flex the affected knee until the leg forms a 40 or 50 degree angle with the plane of the image receptor. Rest the patient's foot on a support device and make sure the leg is not rotated. Adjust the position of the image receptor to center its upper half to the knee joint. The central ray is angled 40 or 50 degrees caudad, depending on the degree of knee flexion, until it is perpendicular to the long axis of the tibia. It enters at the level of the popliteal fossa and exits through the apex of the patella. Positioning for an AP projection using the Beclair method begins with the patient supine. Have the patient flex the affected knee until the long axis of the femur forms an angle of 60 degrees with the long axis of the tibia. Use sandbags or a positioning sponge to support the knee and place the image receptor under the knee. Adjust the patient's position until the femoral condyles are parallel and equidistant to the plane of the image receptor. If needed, use additional sandbags to immobilize the foot and help the patient maintain the correct position. The central ray is angled cephalad until it is perpendicular to the long axis of the tibia and enters at a point half inch or 1.3 centimeters below the apex of the patella. Make sure the image receptor is centered to the central ray. 
For all axial projections, anatomical markers are placed on the image receptor to identify the anatomical side that is being examined. The patient's gonads are shielded, and the shield is placed between the x-ray source and the patient. The patient is instructed to hold very still, but no breathing instructions are necessary. An 8 by 10 inch or 18 by 24 centimeter image receptor is used for an axial projection of the intercondylar fossa and may be adjusted crosswise or lengthwise, depending on the method used. If this size is not available, a 10 inch by 12 inch or 24 by 30 centimeter image receptor may be used. The image receptor is adjusted lengthwise for examinations using the Holmblad and Camp Coventry methods and is adjusted crosswise for an examination using the Beclair method. The SID is set at a minimum of 40 inches, although some departments may require a longer SID. Collimation is adjusted to 8 inches by 12 inches. Radiographs of the intercondylar fossa are produced without grids or automatic exposure control. 70 kVp is a common setting for an axial projection with a mass setting of 2.5 when using digital radiography and 5 mass when using computed radiography. A small focal spot is selected. Axial projections will show the intercondylar fossa, the femorotibial joint space, and the posterior inferior articular surfaces of the femoral condyles. The intercondylar tubercles of the intercondylar eminence and the tibial plateaus are also visualized. The following quality criteria should be used to determine if a radiograph of the intercondylar fossa has been produced with proper positioning and technical factors. Collimation does not obscure relevant anatomy. The intercondylar fossa is seen without superimposition by the patellar apex. The intercondylar fossa and the knee joint are open. The posterior inferior articular surfaces of the medial and lateral femoral condyles are well visualized. One or both tibial plateaus are seen in profile, with the anterior and posterior surfaces superimposed. The intercondylar eminence is centered, and there is slight overlap of the proximal tibia and fibula, indicating that the knee is not rotated. The image also includes all soft tissue and adequately demonstrates bony detail. This concludes the clinical refresher for radiography of the knee.